So when the South Park project came up, it was kind of a big surprise. Uh, what was what was interesting about it was we were actually contacted directly by South Park. Normally that's not how it works, is you know, usually a publisher calls us and say, hey, we have a license, we want you to make a game. But this time it was the license holder themselves. And which was really, it was exciting because normally, I mean, it's great to work on licensed product, we've done a lot of them, but to actually be working initially straight for the licensor, it meant that the guys who it was their baby were the ones that are going to be telling what they want. And on top of it, what was great once we started working with them was finding out how much into games that they were. When we first met with Matt and Trey, it was really first kind of figuring out, you know, what do they know? What do we know? What do they really want from a game? Uh, and, and they ended up being really talking about games in general. Uh, they both play a ton of games. Trey's put, I don't even know how many hours, 80, 90, 100 hours into Oblivion and, and things like that. And so a lot of it was saying, okay, so how could we take South Park? Like, what's their vision for South Park in relation to all the games that we've played? Uh, and in, what was interesting though, and what it really came down to, was really talking about what's that first step? What's that first thing that we need to do to make sure that this can be really a South Park game? And you know, by the end of the meeting, and I forgot how long it was, hour, hour and a half meeting, we were talking, and it just came down to, if we can't make the game look like South Park, then why make it? So, I mean, there's been a lot of South Park games, 3D versions of Cartman and all that kind of stuff, but if it can't look exactly like the TV show, then this wouldn't be the South Park game. And, and that's really what we first came out of that meeting and were, were to go to do is like, go make this look exactly like South Park. So before the project really, really started, we did two proof of concepts for, for Matt and Trey. Uh, the first one was just a very quick thing. We put Cartman on the background of a, of a gas station. And, and it was just so we could make it, just sort of look like, oh yeah, we can get up on a console, we can get how South Park looks. Uh, but then it was, okay, but it actually has to be moving around and, and, thing, and things like that. So we went, okay, how, what do we want to do here? So the prototype that we ended up going, the, like the bigger one that we ended up actually going over with Matt and Trey directly, was where we did Stan's house, the outside of Stan's house, uh, the inside. You go inside and Randy's there playing uh, Guitar Hero in his underwear, and then you could go into the kitchen, pick up a spatula, and it became an ax with all this kind of crazy stuff stuff going on and you could jump around you could hit you know you could kind of swing your axe you could change yourself from uh, different skin colors and and like a spiked helmet and, and different hair, different hair and things like that and we took it uh, to South Park and showed it to Matt and Trey and you know we were kind of showing it Matt immediately picked up the 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 controller and just started running around it was like it was like playing the show he said and he even they even went he went straight up to the screen and goes wow that's the that's the construction paper he could see the texture of the construction paper then we kind of knew we'd really hit the look and from there it was, okay, great. So we solved that first thing. We solved making it look exactly like the show. And the next step from there is now, okay, how, how do we now make it, you know, a big epic game? What's interesting about this game, it's sort of, the, and it's the crux of what makes it hard to make and easy to make at the same time is, is, actually, is actually the art. Because uh, we can actually make a lot of special art. You know, a lot of times in our big 3D games and things like that, there's only, it, it, it's, it takes a lot of time to make a new model and all the animation for it and all this. Once we've gotten sort of how something is put together and how the, the, the animation works and things like that, we can generate a lots of all the different characters and unique things. Uh, you know, one of the things that's interesting is that a girl, a girl and a boy character in South Park is literally differentiated by the voice and the hair. And that's pretty much it. So it means that we can kind of create all of this unique stuff. And that's, I think, what's great. It means that we can just, we just cram this game full of all of these unique things. When usually making a game, unique is the challenge. Unique, doing everything that's unique and everything that is just different is just, I mean, it makes us pull our hair out, you know? I mean, that's why I've always really appreciated like more of the Japanese role-playing games because they just, they kind of like, we're just gonna make everything crazy and unique and they kind of do that. And I've always wondered kind of how they're able to do that for what they've done, but it, it's an interesting opportunity for South Park in that we can do that. Like, you know, hey, we want to make a new boss creature. Like doing all the functionality behind it is still, is still work, but making it that unique boss art in the world, we can just, you know, get done in a day. When we were looking at approaching the game, uh, it was sort of like, who are we making this game for? Are we making it just for South Park fans? Are we making it for Obsidian fans? Are we making it for Call of Duty fans? Are we making it for Peggle fans? I mean, who, who's really the, the person that we're making this for? And it really came down to, I mean, ultimately we're Obsidian, so we, we make role-playing games. So it has to be for someone who enjoys playing role-playing games, but that doesn't mean that we wanted to just eliminate like South Park fans, you know? And so, and it was so, because it was very important that almost they're like the target group. And that kind of like changed a lot of how we looked at the game uh, from a standpoint of, we want people to experience, any person who's playing the game to experience as much of the world as possible. Uh, so that actually kind of changed a little bit from the standpoint of instead of having it where people, it's kind of 
more of a challenge to kind of get around to all the different nooks and crannies of the world. We want to make it, we want to facilitate that. We make it easier for people to go anywhere that they want and see South Park in a game. And that was really for the South Park people. But it also meant that from the standpoint of like when we're looking at combat and things like that, we're like it has to be fun for them, but then it has to have the depth for someone who is really into role playing game. And so that's kind of the, and that's another focus, looking at multiple depths of things. So for the people that want to put the time into the system and time to learning it and going and doing sub quests and getting every friend on your social network page and things like that, that's for people who really want to play the game. But for someone who's a South Park fan, they can go and see a lot of South Park because that's what they want out of it. So South Park as a license is kind of an interesting thing because normally like when we're working with a license, it's sort of, you know, here's a bunch of books, here's some films, here's some ideas, here's a, a book that tells you what's right, what's wrong when it comes to licensing. With South Park, it's, it's very different because it is Matt and Trey. You know, it is Crispy, who was uh, the art director on the show for 10 years. And it's talking to the guys that actually do it and still do it every day. I mean, they're still making the show after 15 years. So while it was awesome to make a Star Wars game, you know, we didn't get to talk to George Lucas, you know? So a lot of it was absorbing everything about Star Wars that's happened in the last 30 years, rather than talking directly to the creator. And so I think what is gonna make it really interesting and for us making a South Park game, it's not a reimagining of, of stuff that already sort of exists but in a different form, it's like, no, this is yet a, a, another extension to everything that is South Park because it's coming directly from Matt and Trey. So a big thing about comedy is that the first time you hear a joke, it's funny. The second time, maybe not so much. I mean, there's a jokes that we all know that are kind of funny always, uh, but you know, that's a big, that's a big concern about when we're, when we're making South Park and how much do we give people and how much we don't. And so that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard of like, you know, we, we it, it, probably more than any other game that, I, that, I, that we've ever worked on, we're going to have to figure out what is that right amount to give to people. So we're not giving it away. You know, so we're not like saying, we're not telling what the big joke is. We're not telling this, we're not telling that. Now on the flip side, and I can tell you just from the game itself, um, you know, we had one of the major, one of the main characters in the game, uh, you know, you could hit him and he could fall over. And every time anyone played the game, they would just, because when you walked up to him, you could just punch him a bit more and they would just twitch every time. It was kind of funny every time you did it. So I mean, there's certain, I think there's some kind of things about the comedy, the physical comedy of it, that is funny always. And I'll be honest, you know, we're not exactly sure how the ESRB is gonna come, to, you know, react to a lot of these things. But the first thing is like, we're not gonna worry about it. Like the first thing is, is that this needs to be South Park. It needs to be outrageous. It needs to be have just crazy crap in it. It needs a lot of swearing. It needs a lot of children dying. It needs just giant out of the, just things that happen are just crazy. And then if we have problems, then we'll deal with them. But the goal, the goal is let's not restrict ourselves right now. Let's make it South Park, make it nuts. And then, and then kind of, as they say, cross that bridge when we come to it.